Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, I've been asked to talk about maintenance on the M65 field jacket. Now, this one that I have, like I've said many times before, I've had since the 70s. And so this is 50 years that I've had this jacket near about. I was a young teenager whenever I got it. And so I have used it extensively over the years. And I mean, not as a fashion thing. This was something I worked in, hunted in, fished in, camped in, all the above. It has been slathered in mud. It's had paint on it. It's had whatever over time. And over time, you're going to have to do some maintenance on it. All right, now here we are. That I know you're in a blizzard right now. And as I say this right now here in Alabama, it's 48 this morning. It was 37 this morning. Three or Three days ago, it was 70 degrees at 3 o'clock in the morning and 84 to 88 degrees during the day. So, but, take this with a grain of salt. How do you clean and care for the field jacket? I typically, um, before I put it up, give it a real good cleaning. And then whenever I take it out at the beginning of the season, I'll air it. I'll put it out in the sun or something because it's probably been in the closet for seven months or something, just air it out, give it a chance, get some fresh air, some sunshine, that normally does it. And then I begin wearing it. Now, as I wear it, because of hot cold, etc., the inside of the collar, especially if I've got the collar standing up, it's against the back of your neck. So you're gonna get oils and stuff there from the back of your neck. What I use is plain old shampoo when it comes time for a bath that it's done got too dirty. What I typically do is I'll just take the shampoo I normally use on my head, and that's what I'll clean the inside of the collar with real good. Take it, take it to the sink, get it wet, smear on some shampoo, and hand wash it several times to get those oils, which is what shampoo does really, really good, get the human oil out of the material. Then I'll do standard laundry. I will take the hood out. I will... Make sure the liner's out of it. It's just a jacket, and I'll put it on a gentle cycle of my washing machine. Standard one like everybody else, just a gentle cycle. I don't want to add any wool light or anything like that to it, just whatever I normally wash clothes with. Now, for the drying of it, again, I make sure the hood is out, but I understand that this thing can get itself wrapped up in a knot. So therefore, what I want to do is I want to put it in the dryer and put something with it that's going to add some agitation. Usually I've got something, in the past I've even put a football in there. You know, it doesn't have to be something like that, but the dryer's on medium. I don't put it on real high heat and just let it tumble. Now if I'm going to take it to an actual laundromat, it has one of them big, huge industrial dryers where I can put it into that, I'll put, because that's a big tumble. I will then put it on to like a medium heat in that and let it run for about 25, 30 minutes. And then the final little bit, I'll put it out and air dry. That's how I've been able to keep my jacket as long as possible. So it's basic cleaning with a focus on the inside of the collar because the way that the field jacket is cut, it fits up tight against the neck. So you're gonna have body oils on it. Same thing around the cuffs and stuff. They're gonna take a little bit of a workout because that's normally where you get all the grunt grunge and stuff on where you're doing stuff with your hands and reaching in the bag and stuff and it's all up in here. Same idea. Now let's talk about the liner. The liner is normally the easiest thing to maintain and as long as you keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't start unraveling or burning or anything, you're okay. Again, a medium dryer or a cool dryer. Quite often I will just simply take this and take this into the bathtub. And those of you that are really concerned because it's a favorite old thing of yours, you might want to do this. I've simply put it into the bathtub before. Add about, oh, four, six inches of warm water into it. Add a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid and surgitate and wash the jacket that way. Drain out the water. Let it drip dry for about a half hour. Just hang it up in the shower and then put it on a line and let it air dry. That works really, really good too. And that's how I usually do my liners because this material will melt if you put it in a real hot dryer. Yes, the military did, etc. I know that. But the military could replace them easy, and I'm not. 
so I want to take care of these. Watch out for fraying where the arm connects to the body underneath. This will start tearing. If you got big reaches and stuff like that, if that happens, you need to reinforce and stitch it. Now let's talk about repairs. On this year, this is going to get some work. Notice how it's fraying right here? That's where the seam has let go. Now, I want to repair this from the inside. And since this field jacket can be turned completely inside out, I can do that. But I need to mark this so I can find it easy, right? So a favorite thing to do is take something like a piece of a paper towel or something, water it up, and I'll stick it in the hole. Anywhere I've got a little hole or something, there's another one on this side, I'll stick it in there. That way I can take the jacket and roll it inside out, pull the sleeves inside out, and see exactly where it is. Then I will fold it up and sew it on the inside. That will make the seam be flat on the surface and not hang on stuff easy. Okay, so I'll repair it from the inside. Now this year I've got a bigger repair I need to do. And this is just from age. The inner liner is thinner, as you know. And you can see right there where that fold is, it's giving up the ghost. Now I could turn that inside out and sew it, and I'll make a bunched up and rubbing. You know, so it'll be something that's like a finger on my back, and I'll feel it. It'll worry me, won't it? I want it to be flat, so I can have a repair there, but it'd be flat better. That's where you go get iron on. Um, let me find it. It's down here. Iron on patches. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to open up and come in from the hood side, and I'm going to lay this on the inside directly underneath that. Okay, I'm going to let that natural pleat right there lay down and let it all be laying down there flat. And then I'll take a hot iron and I'll go over this. Now to keep the back side of this, as you know, you have one side that's fabric and one side that's the shiny. The shiny side's the side I want. Okay, that's the adhesive. I'm going to put it under there like that with the shiny side facing outward so that when I iron it, it sticks. I'll put over the top of this material some thin piece of cotton cloth, like a napkin or something like that, and I'll iron it till it sticks real good. I'll iron it, pull the iron off, let it cool off a minute, and I'll check it. If I'm not completely sealed, go back with the iron, and using the point of the iron, get up into all the corners to make sure it's fully stuck. Once it's fully stuck, that should be fine. Okay. Now that is the basic repair for stuff like that. Now, how to store your jacket. I usually hang mine in the back of my closet. And how I do that is I use two coat hangers, two together, to keep it from sagging and bending down. Because what I've seen in the past is these jackets are heavy. Even empty, they're relatively heavy. And the thin coat hangers of today will slowly bend down until it falls off, or it may actually put pressure tears on the inside because it's not evenly holding the weight. It's only on two fingers, so to speak. So I want to put two coat hangers together or get a heavy coat hanger to hold it. How do I store the liner inside of the jacket? Now the easiest way to put these together that I've demonstrated before is I'm going to make sure that the label is facing me and I'm going to put the sleeping liner on. I call this a sleeping liner because it's one of my favorite things, sleeping jackets to wear in a hammock or a sleeping bag. Just pull it out of my um, M65 and button this thing up and wear it while I'm in the sleeping bag trying to sleep. You slide around good, it's great. I've talked about that. Then, taking my fingers, I'm going to hook the edge of the liner and I'm going to put on the jacket. Now once the jacket and liner are together, now I come here to the front and I start buttoning. And I button all these buttons along the edge. I'm not going to worry about the ones in my sleeve yet. 
I'll do those whenever I take the jacket off. But I'll button all these buttons in place. And then I will gently slide the jacket off. Now how that means is I will reach in, I will grab the liner, and then I'll pull my hand out. Once I take the jacket off, then I'll come in from this way and button that button in there to anchor. Button the button in there to anchor, and button two buttons on the top of the collar. And my liner is attached, cleaned, repaired. I will then put it and hang it up. Now, some of you are not in that position where you may have rodents or something like that that's going to get to it because this I ain't got room for this in the house. We're having stored out in the garage. I lived in very poor conditions as a boy. And here's something we learned. If you're having to store winter clothing or blankets or even like these jackets, something like in a garage or a barn or something, the best thing I recommend is getting a steel trash can. One of them old sits at the side of the road steel trash cans. Put your clothing or whatever you're storing into it. Stop about that far from the top. Okay? Put a big sheet of cardboard in at the top. You kind of have to press it in. And across the top of that, you want to put red cedar shavings. You'll find these in the pet department. It's red cedar shavings that goes into a rabbit cage or a hamster cage, something like that. Why red cedar? There was a reason our ancestors used red cedar closets and cabinets. No insect likes the smell of red cedar. It's repulsive to them. It smells toxic. And so they don't do it. That's the reason cedar closet, cedar chest were a way of storing our stuff and bugs wouldn't get in there. Especially stuff that liked to eat wool and stuff like that, like moths, roaches, whatever, wouldn't go into it. So by filling that top two inches up with that and then putting that steel lid on and pressing down hard so it sticks, now rodents are not going to gnaw through that steel can and insects are not going to get in it and eat your stuff. I have stored stuff like that sometimes five years out in a garage and be able to open it up and all my stuff smells like cedar, which smells good and is a natural insect repeller. So when I put my field jacket on in the spring, oh, excuse me, in the fall, it smells like red cedar and insects don't like me. Hope these tips give you some ideas, guys. Thank you very much for all the support. If you enjoyed the content, please hit that like button before you go. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.